15, 20 minutes or so. Um, Deb, Deb Bertelot, Deb, what will happen to our health savings accounts and will this be an option if Republicans rework health care? Yes, um, if Republicans rework health care, your health savings uh, you know, accounts are in good shape and it's a, it's a big part of the agenda. And here's the interesting thing about health savings accounts. The more they're out there, the more popular they become. People are very, very interested in them because they're controlling their own dollars and they're making individual um, individual decisions and they're responsible for those decisions. Now in the healthcare law, what they ended up doing was truncating and limiting the types and the, the scope of things that you're able to run through the healthcare accounts. And again, all part of the agenda to narrow options and get everybody on a pathway to a single payer system. Okay, Annette Burnett. Is it true Medicare premiums are going from $94 a month to over $200 a month, and why are we not getting raises on Medicare? I don't know off the top of my head. I couldn't tell you what, what they're going from and to. I'll tell you this, though. The, the problem with this bill as it relates to Medicare is it directly takes $500 billion out of Medicare during the 10-year budget window, and it simply takes it away. And when you ask the next question, well, where exactly is that coming from? They say, well, we're going to improve waste, fraud, and abuse and other efficiencies. Well, how do you do that if you don't do this type of thing like predictive modeling and some of these other fraud components? So I think from, from my perspective, the, the danger of beginning a new entitlement is that we haven't fully funded and completely gotten one entitlement under control. And I think ultimately, it doesn't serve anybody to begin new obligations when we haven't met current obligations. Okay, this one's not named, but how will the new health care bill affect the inequalities and in services for mental health? I don't know. I mean, I think we've always, uh, mental health coverage has been sort of a, a, a lagging, um, uh, not a lagging indicator, but um, something that is that has long been stigmatized and we culturally have been slow to wake up to the um, the, the sort of physiological and and um, medical nature of a lot of mental health issues so over a period of time there's been big battles as it relates to mental health parity I think we've reached the point in the United States where most folks look at mental health as inextricably linked to their whole health so I think that there would be a real real attempt to accommodate that sort of thinking in any new health care law. Okay, also not named, what, why did the Stupak Amendment fail? The Stupak Amendment failed because people lost courage and they caved on core convictions. It was one of the most troubling things that I've seen when I, since the time I've been in public life, certainly the most troubling thing I've seen since, uh, since you sent me to Washington, D.C. Um, you know, the Stupak Amendment, as you know, is the, is the Hyde Amendment. And Henry Hyde was my predecessor, a great man, and a real icon in many ways. And the Hyde Amendment is a place where most Americans, notwithstanding their position on abortion generally, most Americans come around the idea that, you know what, we really ought not be funding a, a hugely controversial <laughs> procedure and compelling people with tax dollars to pay for that. It doesn't matter what, where you come down on the abortion question, the overwhelming ma majority of Americans um, a a agree with that. The so-called pro-life Democrats that ended up voting in favor of that, um, they were, they, they, let's put it this way, they made a bad decision. And the bad decision, um, if you assume the best that they sincerely believe that a presidential order trumps a federal law, then they shouldn't be in Congress anyways, because that's not the way the world works. We don't empower presidents of the United States to override a, a, a federal statute that's in place. So the notion that President Obama was somehow going to sign an executive order that was going to prohibit funding from abortions was absurd on its face. And I think that it's going to be, I mean, you'll notice Congressman Stupak didn't run for re-election. You notice that there's a whole host of folks that voted in favor of that bill, walked away from the Stupak Amendment, who's, who, who campaigned in 06 and 08 as pro-life candidates um, from districts that really value that issue highly, and now they're in real jeopardy, and they're probably not going to be sent back to Congress, several of them, based on that issue. Okay, Jim Bernard. 
This is a good one by Sylvia Stavey. Two-parter, how were you able to make your entire speech without the benefit of a teleprompter? <laughs> Please. <laughs> is pre-existing in a health care bill only for children up to 18? I don't know. Uh, 